All right, just a quick video to introduce the concept of typed arrays. Now, this is a different sort of data type in JavaScript. With typed arrays, what we're doing is we're creating arrays, but the contents of the array are strictly controlled. So every element in your array is going to be either an 8-bit integer, a 16-bit integer, a 32-bit integer, a 32-bit float, or a 64-bit float. So you've got these restricted data types that you have. Uh, you can also have unsigned integers or unsigned clamped 8-bit integers. Now these are just different kinds of numbers that you can store. The reason why we have these is originally it started off as something for WebGL. So creating web graphics, OpenGL for the web, uh, being able to do 3D graphics on the web. Um, this required being able to pass an array of numbers uh, you wanted to store say pixel values the red green blue alpha values for every pixel things like that you wanted to pass that data to some sort of native interface that was expecting to receive only numbers that were of a specific size um, so there's a lot of data handling that you'd have to do to make sure that these things are working properly so we have all these apis now going beyond WebGL, which also support typed arrays. Um, we have this ability now that we can create these arrays and restrict what's inside of them. So there's a couple layers to this thing. There's the typed array itself. Um, this would be, I've got all these different types listed off here. So these are the different types of uh, typed arrays. Int8 array. So this is an integer. It's an array of integers and every integer in there has to be an 8-bit integer. So there's eight ones and zeros. And with this, we can represent the numbers from negative 128 to 127 with an unsigned integer, unsigned meaning there's no zeros, you can go zero to 255. And a uint eight clamped array is an array of eight bit integers that are unsigned, but they're also clamped. And this is sort of like built in uh, data validation. If you try to put a number that's less than zero, it'll convert it to zero. If you try to put in a number that's greater than 255, it automatically becomes 255. So it's a, a great data type for working with things where potentially there could be a value outside of that range that you're trying to put in there. So we've got the 8-bit, then there's the 16-bit signed and unsigned, 32-bit signed and unsigned, the 32-bit floats, which have this range, and then the 64-bit floats, which have this range. So it's 10 to the power of 38, 10 to the power of, yeah, this is negative 38, 10 to the power of 38, 10 to the power of negative 324, up to 10 to the power of 308, 308. All right, so you've got these different types of arrays. Then the container for all of these is called an array buffer. So you have an array buffer. This is the chunk of memory that's set aside to hold these typed arrays. Now, the array buffer is used to represent this chunk of data, this raw binary data, but you're not allowed to actually go into the array buffer and say, hey, take that bunch of bits and change them. If you want to interact with the array buffer, the thing that's holding this typed array, you have to use what's known as a data view. The data view is the thing that has the get and set methods that let you work with it. If you're going to work with one of the typed arrays, you have the same sort of methods that you would with an array. So there's a map, there's a uh, reduce method, for each loop, all these things that you'd normally get with an array for working with numbers, you, you have these for the typed arrays as well. It's just the data that's inside them is restricted. So everything in the array has to be of the same data type, like an int 16 or an int 8. Int 16 means 16 bits, so that's two bytes. Every number is given two bytes in this array buffer, this big chunk, big chunk of data that's available, or a big chunk of memory that's available. So they work very efficiently. They work with external libraries. So there's other programs that you're going to be accessing through these APIs. So your JavaScript is going to use these APIs to talk to other native libraries for doing work with these APIs. Now, the way that you work with it in the JavaScript itself, you can declare a new array buffer. So great. And I can pass in a number like here. I'm saying I want to pass in 16 bytes. 
That's the length that I'm passing in. Or I can pass in another buffer, copy that over, pass in a typed array, copy that over. Uh, every time you're doing this, you're creating a new copy of one. So I've got an array buffer 16 bytes long. So that's 16 chunks that are 8 bits each. So 16 times 8, that's uh, 128. So we've got 128 bits. And we can use that in these chunks. Now, that 128 bits that I'm breaking up into chunks, I can decide to break those up into chunks that are 8 bits or 16 bits or 32 bits. It's up to me how I want to break those up. The data view, we pass the buffer into the data view. The data view is the thing that's going to give us access. And we can have a whole bunch of data views that are pointing to the same array buffer. So the array buffer, that's the chunk of bits. Data view, I'm creating one data view here from this buffer. And then I'm creating a second one from the same buffer. And I'm referencing here, starting at byte number 10, I want three bytes. So in the data view, that's how I'm accessing the array. I can get to item number zero, item number one, two, three, four, five, up to number 15. So that's my 16 things. This is the length of my array buffer. There's going to be 16 numbered zero through 15. I want to get number 10, 11, and 12. Those three bytes are gonna be this view. So this view gives me access to those. This view gives me access to the full thing. So in number one, I'm saying, I'm calling the method set int eight. I want to set the one in slot number 11 to the value 42. So number 42, it's, that's a valid eight bit integer. I'm putting that into slot number 11 inside this array buffer. Then I'm going to go to the second view. So the second one I created, which was only three bytes, but numbers 10, 11, and 12. So that means it has zero or one or two. Those are the three values that are inside of there, inside this data view. I want number 11 from the main array buffer. So that would be the second one. I started at number 10, number 10 would be zero. Number 11 is gonna be number one. That's the one I want. So this is that 42 that I retrieved. So I console log that out run it and there it is there's the 42 if i try to get the next one so let's do another console.log i can get dv get int 8 and i want to get the one in position 0 or i can get the one in position 2 now those ones by default are going to be zeros because they've yet to be assigned when you create these array buffers and the data views to get into them Everything is initialized as a value zero. All right, so that's basically it. That's what these typed arrays are. It's just a way to store a whole bunch of bytes as one big block and access them as if they were an array. Every single byte is going to be one value that you put into the array buffer, and then we can access it with a data view to read and write the values that are inside of there. You will see them when working with these things. So we can work with typed arrays when getting data from a canvas, the HTML5 canvas, working with WebGL, WebSockets, and so on. So I hope that gives you enough of an introduction that you can start to play around with them and see where they're gonna be useful. If you get into any of these APIs, I encourage you to try using the data view and the typed arrays with those. Okay, I uh, hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.